you know, and, and, and I've been talking to my poor mom. I've got the best mother in the world. She's sitting right over there in the chair watching TV right now. And she has done, I think we've done about 17 Bible studies out of the, uh, I think there's 19, I think, in that whole deal. Okay. Well, and, hold uh, on. Hold on just a minute. Hold on just a minute, Homer. Yeah. Let's um, let's see. We have somebody that's calling in, and we want to let them in on our conversation. Yes, caller, you're live on What Does the Bible Say? Hey, Johnny. This is your friend Roy from Kentucky. All right. Hey, Roy. Uh, Homer, we have an, an, a man that is uh, calling in that's been watching our program over in Kentucky. And, uh, uh, Roy, we have Homer on the phone. He's from Jacksonville, Florida. And uh, he, uh, I don't know if you're watching the program or not, Roy. Uh, have you heard what's been said? Yeah, I've been watching. It's, it's a good one. Well, we appreciate it, and um, uh, you wanting to make a comment about what's being said, or you just want to give us a, a, some information, what? Well, I just wanted to tell you that uh, I, I told you I'd call you when I did this, but my wife and I have uh, been baptized for the remission of our sins, and we're members of the Church of Christ, and we just wanted to thank you, because it's going great. It's awesome. Well, that's, that's, uh, that's great news. What do, you, what do you say about that, Homer? Yeah, that is great. I'm so glad to hear that. Well, I, I'm thrilled. I heard him, I, yeah, I heard, I'm, heard, I'm sorry. I heard him on there talking. You know, before I, he called up uh, one night. He was on his way home or something, and uh, he talked for just a minute. And uh, I, I sure am proud. You know that both of them are. That, that tickles me to death. Well, it does me too. And uh, Roy, we really do appreciate you letting us know, and we especially appreciate you letting us know on the broadcast. Do you mind telling us what congregation you'll be attending? Uh, the Cumberland Church of Christ in Somerset, Kentucky. All right, Cumberland Church of Christ. Um, uh, that's, that's very great news. And, uh, Roy, we want you to be praying for, um, for Homer and uh, his mother. And I guess you heard the account that he was given, and so that's what we're going to do is all be praying for each other. And, uh, Roy, we really do. Uh, we're very excited about that, and we appreciate you letting us know tonight. Okay, we'll pray for uh, Homer, Johnny, and uh, keep up the good work. We appreciate you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right, Homer, that's great, and we'll uh, definitely be praying for your mother. And um, you yeah, have, yeah, I have, I'm sorry, go ahead. Huh? You, you have definitely demonstrated for us tonight what takes place out in the religious world. You know, a lot of times people, right. they they try to act like there is no division in the Bible. And, Tell us why you're teaching the plan of salvation is not in the Bible. Tell us why you criticize other individuals for teaching things that's not in the Bible when you're not teaching things that's in the Bible, and why you criticize us for teaching what is in the Bible. Because after all, on the Day of Judgment, when we all stand on the Day of Judgment, if you're a person who believed that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and you were willing to repent of your past sins and then be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and continue in the Apostle Doctrine, you're going to be a saved individual. That's what the Bible says. And you're on what does the Bible say? Hey, John. This is Kevin down in Salisbury. Hey, Kevin. Hey, it was good news of a brother and sister up in Kentucky. Um, that was good to hear. Um, I kind of relate to both callers tonight, and the other uh, the other gentleman that called by his father. Yeah, you know, that's basically the same thing that happened, you know, with me and my father. And except for it wasn't Baptist, it was Lutheran. But uh, I understand exactly what that man's going through. Like I say, with his family, except for it wasn't my sister, it was a brother. You know, that told my dad he didn't need to be baptized. <laughs> so I understand exactly what he's going through. And Kevin, I, I appreciate you calling right at this moment because, you know, I, I need to ask you, Kevin, what, what do you say about persons who are in the Church of Christ that say that I shouldn't present the information like I'm doing tonight? What do you say back to them? Well, I think the other gentlemen out of K Kentucky and myself are, are living proof that what you're doing, uh, it does get your attention. It got my attention um, for somebody that is looking for the truth, but you know you're not getting it when you hear it. Um, you know, I, I think what you're doing, the way you're preaching, is exactly how you should. I mean, it, it's supposed to be bold, and when something's wrong, you point it out. If something's wrong with your car, you don't go to your mechanic to dance around what's wrong with it. You point out what's wrong with it, or if you go to a doctor, <laughs> um, you don't want him to sugarcoat what's wrong with you. You know, you, you understand that with right. having the cancer you had, you want to say, hey, it's cancer and it's bad. Here's what we need to do. Well, you're exactly so, uh, right. Yeah. You're exactly right. And I appreciate that, Kevin. And, and you made me think today, too. Um, 
a gentleman visited with us and his daughter has stage four cancer and the doctors told her that there was nothing that they could do. And you know, I, I'm as upset about that as I am about this denominational teaching. The, the place where I went, Cancer Treatment Centers of America, they actually, they, they beg people who have been told there's nothing else you can do because there is something they can do. And uh, it, it aggravates me when I hear people tell people that there's nothing else we can do and they send you home to die. And well, I like that. It's like the doctors is the same with these denominational preachers. They're really getting anything they can do, so that is all they can tell you. That's right. That's all they can tell you is faith only, and that's why the doctors like that they can't help you, and you got doctors that can. And um, I think that's where we're, where we're at. We got guys that preach truth, and guys that don't preach the truth, and women. Well, I appreciate um, your call, Kevin. It's ten thirty, and I can't take the air, the uh, station's time. We're right at the time. All right, brother. All right, we love you. Appreciate you. We love you too, brother. All right, Have good night. Later. All right, folks, thanks for watching, and let me put a plug out there for Cancer Treatment Centers of America. I was over there in uh, uh, February, and while I was there, they have a map of the United States, and people come from Virginia North Carolina. There was a person that came from Virginia, and they, they had written on the board, I was supposed to die in August, and I left Cancer Treatment Centers of America cancer-free. If you have any uh, need as far as spiritual things or if you're a person who has cancer and knows someone that has cancer, please give me a call and let me do what I can to get you in the Cancer Treatment Centers of America and let me try to help you get into the Church of Christ, which you read about in the New Testament. God bless you. Always ask for What does the Bible say? Good night. The John Locke Foundation, also a regular NC Spin panelist, John writes columns for many newspapers across the state, has written several books, and has spoken in all 100 counties of North Carolina on public policy issues, including health care. Dr. Conrad Flick is a practicing family physician who served on both the state and uh, national boards of family physicians and the North Carolina Health Care Quality Alliance. He has great experience in dealing with Medicaid and legislative issues. Over on my near left is Don Bradley, Dr. Don Bradley, a Senior Vice President for Health Care and Chief Medical Officer at Blue Cross Blue Shield, a family practitioner. Dr. Bradley helps formulate programs, interventions, and information to help customers make informed choices.